So now that we've got DNS installed, the next thing to do is to create a DNS zone. Now, a DNS zone maps to a domain name like yvcc.edu or google.com. That would be a DNS zone. So let's start by looking and seeing what we have. We're going to go to Tools and DNS. Now, I've just installed this. And remember, this is on standalone. So this is not Active Directory integrated. So I have my server. But I really don't have a whole lot else. I have forward lookup zones, but there's nothing in there. Reverse lookup zones, I've got nothing in there. Trust points, I have nothing in there. Conditional forwarders, I have nothing in there. Now, let's talk about the difference between a forward and a reverse lookup zone. A forward lookup zone is going to translate a name to an IP address. So I put in www.google.com and I do a forward lookup to get Google's IP address. A reverse lookup translates an IP address to a name. So I would look up you know, 206.7.51.12 and it would tell me what name is associated with that. That's a reverse lookup. Now most of the time what we do is we use forward lookups. However, more and more places are doing reverse lookups specifically for security purposes. So I get a connection from somebody who says they are whatever, whatever the name they it says they're connected from. I want to verify that that's correct, so we'll do a reverse lookup. This will happen a lot with mail servers and other types of servers like that. So that's what a reverse lookup is. Now, let's start by creating a forward lookup zone. Before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and open up my command prompt real quick, just so we can see what we have for a IP address. So I'm going to type command IP config, and I have 192.168.5.10. So I'm going to create a forward lookup zone. So I'm going to go to forward lookup zone, right click, new zone next and I can create three different types of zones a primary zone a secondary zone or a stub zone now my one option here is to store the zone in Active Directory and that's only available if the DNS server is on a writable domain controller and that actually simplifies some redundancy and zone transfer issues if you're stored in Active Directory but again, we can only do that if this DNS server is a domain controller, which is why a lot of times we'll do that. But in this case, we're working isolated. So we have three different types, a primary zone, a secondary zone, and a set stub zone. So the primary zone creates a zone that can be updated directly on the server. Basically, this is where we can read and write zone records. Zone resource records are the actual records that do the name resolution. The secondary zone creates a copy that exists on another server. So the idea behind that is to provide load balancing and fault tolerance. A stub zone is a special type of zone. Creates only the NS record, so the name server record, the start of authority, and possible glue A records. A server containing a stub zone is not authoritative for that. So because it's going to be the first one created, we're going to do a primary zone, and I'm going to click Next. Remember, you do the secondary zone for backup, and those are the two you're going to probably use most often. So we're going to set the zone name, and I'm going to call this Bassett. I'm going to do it in a lowercase. Bassett.local is going to be my zone name. And click Next. Now, this is going to give us a zone name file. Now we can use the new one that's being created, bassett.local.dns, or we can use an existing file. If The only way, reason we'd use an existing file is if we'd had a pre-existing zone, and then that device crashed, but we were able to pull the zone file off of it, then we could point this to that zone file, and we wouldn't have to recreate all of the resource records. But since we don't have that, we're going to go ahead and create a new file, and we're going to use the default file name. Okay, next question is dynamic updates. Do we want to allow dynamic updates or not? Now, this is another place where Active Directory integrated zones are a little bit different. In a non-Active Directory integrated zone, in a server that doesn't exist, or hosts a zone that's not uh, stored in Active Directory, I can allow both secure and non-secure updates or do not allow dynamic updates or not, or at all. The only way I can do secure updates only is if I'm in an Active Directory integrated zone. 
I'm not, I don't have that option. Now, if we're doing a public facing DNS server though, something that uh, everyone in the world, we want them to be able to, you know, we want to host a website and an email server and we want everybody in the world to be able to access them, that's going to be a public facing DNS server. There we probably don't want dynamic updates. Inside our local network, where we're doing the uh, name resolution for our Windows domain, we need uh, dynamic updates, and we need them to be secure. But in this scenario, remember we're doing a public-facing DNS server, so we don't want to allow dynamic updates at all. Okay, that creates our zone, and now we have this zone bassett.local. And when we open that up, you see we have a couple of records. The NS record is the name server record. The start of authority record, so uh, this identifies the device that has access, that is the... Um, the definitive server for this domain. So you'll only have one start of authority. You might have multiple NS records for different name servers that are associated with it. So that creates a primary uh, DNS or a primary zone for us, primary forward lookup zone. Now I also want to walk through the process of creating a reverse lookup zone. And this is why we looked up our IP address earlier. Okay, so let's right click on reverse lookup zones and create a new zone. Click next. Now this can again can be a primary zone, secondary zone, stub zone. We want to make this primary because this is our first server that's going to be responsible for this zone. We can choose whether to do an IPv4 lookup or IPv6. We're running v4 so that's what we're going to use. And then we set the network ID. So the network ID is going to be the first three octets of the IP address. Now, if you know a lot about networking, you know that that is not necessarily always the network ID. That's fine. Uh, in this case, we're doing a slash 24, and notice that's kind of what they decided here. They determined here is those first three octets become the identifier. And for public facing, that's normally going to be just fine. So we're going to do 192.168.5. Now this gives us a reverse lookup zone name, which basically reverses that, and then in address.arpa. Okay, that's fine. We'll click next. Create a zone file with following name. Yes. Again, the same thing about using an existing one. Again, we don't want to allow dynamic updates. So we're going to click Next and Finish. Okay, now that gives us our two lookup zones. And notice again, we have a name server and NS zone and an SOA. So that gives us our two zones that are now created. Now, in our next video, we'll look at uh, creating some uh, zone or some records for these zones to give it some functionality.